more succinctly at the end to the aesthetic side. So, then. So, in the field of reading practices, what does it mean to adopt a, pra a pragmatic approach? First and foremost, it forces us to question certain schemes or models which are to this day considered as settled by traditional criticism. For instance, the linear evolution of orality towards letters. This evolution is shocking for two reasons. First of all, because this perspective is based on a strange but rarely reappraised presupposition. Orality would have disappeared under the pressure of the written world. But especially because the pair orality literacy is often made to correspond to the pair oralized reading silently. In other words, orality equals oralized reading, literacy equals silent reading. No, this, this, this division is biased because it is based on a false parallelism. That is to say that oral reading and silent reading both depend on the literacy paradigm that since the very notion of reading supposes the presence of a written text. What stands out of this is that the true distinction, the only appropriate one really, according to me, in order to study the history of medieval reading, is not that which separates or light reading from silent reading, but rather a pragmatic approach, a pragmatic distinction, which opposes reading to oneself to reading to an audience. In other words, private reading versus public reading. Actually, the problem is not only the fact that oralized reading takes its origin from such a biased parallelism, but really that this concept is not adapted to describe the act of reading. If we ask ourselves, how did it work? It clearly appears that the term voiced reading points at two distinct realities. On the one hand, reading out loud to oneself, somewhat like school children do. On the other hand, reading through a group of listeners, which is by definition oralized reading. In any case, this pragmatic distinction between reading to oneself and reading to an audience allows us to avoid certain errors of appreciation. For instance, to speak like Paul Sanger of the new privacy afforded by silent reading is strong evidence of how the notions of private reading and public reading are confused together. Paul Sanger's affirmation, under seemingly logical appearances, masks a fault in reasoning. It is not the acquisition of co the cognitive processes involved in reading silently that allows intimacy, but rather solitary reading as opposed to public reading, be it oralized or not. My pragmatic approach brings me to reconsider a mass of evidences particularly literary and iconographic material from the end of the Middle Age, which have been overlooked by critics because they do not fit in the traditional evolutionary model which claims that public reading disappeared during the Middle French period. For the purpose of my research, I have been brought to reconsider the contribution of three types of sources. Firstly, iconographic documents which represent public reading. So, for instance, here, the frontispiece of Christine de Pizan's Moral Proverbs, where the author herself reads to a public. Secondly, textual evidences, such as the numerous scenes of reading to an audience accounted for in narratives, as well as the frequent allusion to public reception that the author inscribes in her texts. Expressions such as lire ou lire, which means to to read it to hear. Allo ir lire, to hear it being read. Comme pourrait on après oir lire, as you should be able to hear it being read. Prendre plaisir à écouter et à lire, to enjoy listening and reading. Finally, codicological evidence, which is at once the most intriguing yet difficult to interpret. Here are a couple of examples. For instance, take a look at this autograph correction by Christine de Pizan. It forces us to ponder the question of word separation, a phenomenon that has indeed already been given much attention.
transmission by a history of reading. Here, the author is visibly concerned about whether the attrait, which is in this context slowly, is read in two words in order to distinguish it from its known attrait, attraction. Now, of course, let's remember that Christine de Pizan's case is unique and may not allow us to generalize this type of observation. Conversely, it's worthwhile to observe that such world agglutination phenomena as à la lumière de la lune, by moonlight, according to certain scholars, may highlight the rhythmic and prosodic structures that may have helped oralize reading that might attest the fact that the author had foreseen a public reading for it. All the more, since what we have here is an author. Punctuation is another very important piece of codicological and paleographical evidence when studying oral performance. This cesure, which mark the pose of the half-life of the world, Whether an aid to oralization in the frame of public reading, or simply a mark placed by the re-reader, who in the book production phase may have wanted to check the correctness of the verse. And even more pragmatically, could these marks have been read with a uh, been read with a magnifying glass? <laughs> Page seven also bears witnesses of the author's intention as to the reception of the text. We have here a precious phenomenon. Two different page setups for one single text, the epicote. The first is typically medieval. It reproduces the form of gloss manuscript with a text in the center and the glosses, as well as the allegories around, it, which account for a very complex page setup especially since many chapters are gathered on a single page. From a practical point of view, how was oralized reading of such a page possible? The author subsequently changed her page title to make it more like linear, more simplified. Why? Out of concern for the, re for the reader, or to facilitate the production of the book. All I can say for now is that Jean Yellow, who himself copied the Epitrotea for Philippe the Good, writes in the epilogue that, though the task was not an easy one, he managed to achieve setting up the marginal clauses around the text. Jean Yellow later goes on to produce another copy of the same text where he simplifies the page setup, just as Christine has done herself. <laughs> 